you know, uh, sometimes in life we look for some roses and we get stolen. Sometimes we're trying to play baseball and cut two strikes and no balls. Then that third one comes and man, we can see this will be a home run. This home run part Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we wonder what's going on. We wonder sometimes why the road gets so rocky. Why why there's so much trouble right here? When we're doing our best to live for God. Bless your Lord. And and we're scratching our head here. What's going on, God? And a lot of times He does. He pulls away from you. He pulls away from you for a reason. Draw you. He's saying, God, do you love me? Do you love me enough to take two more steps? Do you care? Rick, do you love me enough yes. to, to press through? Do you love me? Sometimes in life, you got to pick up your shovel to go here and dig another well somewhere. Because the enemy's done come and, and filled your well up. The water's not there anymore. The refreshing is not there. And you've got to run over here somewhere and, and you take your little shovel and you dig and you dig. Bless you, Lord. And then water comes out and it looks great. And then some enemy comes by and says, that's my water. <laughs> that's not your water. That's my water. So you get your little shovel there and you walk home. Put over your shoulder a little while and Walk a little bit farther and dig you another well. And after a while, the blessings of God will just cover you up. That's the way God is sometimes. One time there was a little frog and it was springtime. This little frog was down in this beautiful pond. He had it all by himself. It was early March and man, things were so good for the frog. Man, he could swim all the way across the pond. He could just jump on the little lily pad there and everything's good. March turned into April when May came. The pond began to dry up. And the little frog said, uh, it's not good. Maybe I need to get out of this pond and go somewhere else. So he gets out of that pond and he finds another pond and it's sort of surrounded by trees and it's shady and it's beautiful. And that little frog just swimming in that pond and everything is so good. In June and July and August comes, the pond dries up again. The little frog says, I'm going on up. He couldn't lay there and perch. But he said, I want to go on up. He goes on up and there's a barn there. There's no water in the barn, but it's cool. He said, maybe I can just stay here to the rain comes. Maybe I can just rest here a little while till the rain comes, till the refreshing comes. And he's just sort of hip-hopping along and something makes a big noise outside and he jumps and he lands in this bath of cream. He's too tall, he can't jump out. The devil tells him, just give up and die. Quit where you're at. But he remembers that first pond down there. And he remembers that second pond. He said, no, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm not going to stop. So he starts swimming just as hard as he can in that bad cream. Pretty soon that bad cream thickens up. It turns into butter. And the little frog jumps out. Then the fall rain comes. It starts pouring down the rain again in September. And that little frog goes on up to another pond and he finds little Miss Frog in there and his life is full of people. See, you can't quit when it gets hard. You can't stop when it looks like it's over. That's when you've got to pick up a shovel and go here and dig another way. Now Abraham came into the land of the Philistines and he dug wells everywhere. He was living among the Philistines, the enemy. But he was digging wells, man. Everything was good. Then his son Isaac 
come into the land and we steady and die. And was living with the Philistines. This is what we're going to read in Genesis 26. Isaac planted, planted grain, grain and had a good harvest that same year. The Lord blessed him. And Isaac was so successful that he became very rich. In fact, the Philistines were jealous of the large number of sheep, goats, and slaves that Isaac owned. They stopped off all the wells that Abraham's servants had dug before his death. Finally, Abimelech said, Isaac, I want you to leave our country. You have become too powerful to stay here. Isaac left. Isaac left and settled in the yard valley where he cleaned out those wells that the Philistines had stopped up. Isaac also gave each of the wells in the same name that Abraham had given them. While his servants were digging in the valley, they found a spring-fed well. But the shepherds of Gerard Valley quarreled with Isaac's shepherds and claimed the water belonged to them. So the well was named Quarrel because they had quarreled with Isaac. Isaac's servants dug another well, and the shepherds also had quarreled about it. So that well was named Jealous. Finally, they dug one more well. There was no quarreling this time. The well was named Lots of Room because the Lord had given them room and would make them very successful. Sometimes in life, they'll feel the way. Sometimes in life, things get hard. Sometimes in life, it's a struggle. Sometimes you got to pick the shovel and dig another well. I remember Rick Mappers went to the meeting. I had all kinds of friends. Yeah. I was probably one of the most popular guys. Because I was into everything I didn't need to do. <laughs> Everybody liked it. But there came a time in my life that I wanted something more than what I had. I wanted a closer walk with God. Yeah. <laughs> So I began to call on Him. I began to desire Him. I began to want to walk with Him. And He gave me such a close walk with Him. I could feel Him all over. He got to the point, Rick, I couldn't drive home without stopping and praying. I had to stop and talk about Him. Well, now that all them friends I had, they didn't understand me. They begin to say, Yeah. Oh, we're They begin to say, Religious fanatic. Yep. Yeah. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted to talk about some old junk. I wanted to talk about Jesus. Amen. Well, they figured they'd retaliate. They got on this big poster. And they draw these big circles all in that poster put their name in them circles. And it was full of circles. That poster was full. One square. No circle. One square. My name. I said, I had to pick up your shovel. And that didn't give me another way. I had to get away from it. Sometimes in life we have to do that. Yes. Sometimes life is hard. Sometimes your enemy, Satan will send an enemy in. And the Bible says that we are to love our enemies. That don't give us an excuse when they don't love us back. Slap them or smack them or do something. We're supposed to do good for their evil. And, and Rick, I will tell you, that is hard. Yes. I can tell you, Kevin, I struggled with that somewhat. There was one case in particular this new guy come in, he's real smart mouth. I tried my best to be good to him. I found the best thing for me to do is pick up your shovel. Well, that's well here. And sometimes your very best friends come against you. Them people that you've got confidence in, them people that you've got trust in. Them people that you share fellowship together in the highest. Dot and I came from a, 
an old timey Baptist background. And everything was good. God began to call me over here a little bit. And I didn't understand it, Kevin. Because it was out of my out of my norm, out of my comfort zone. But he was calling me to do things. And I thought, God, I, I don't fully understand. I began to hear the voice of God. And people went, Man, you're crazy. God don't talk to you. I got news for you. God talks to Amen. you. You listen. Yes. We're so busy we can't hear you. Yes. He Bless talks him, through his word. He talks through the Holy Spirit. We can hear his voice. Yes. I can tell you many times he told me things and I did what he told me and it saved my life. But my friends that I when I dug my well over here and left things that didn't like me and I got over here with my Christian brothers and sisters that I thought loved me. I found out when I wanted to talk more about Jesus than, than the car races or football games or the latest song on the radio. And they didn't understand. When I decided in my heart, when I purpose, Terry, I was going to walk close to God. I wanted Him to be Lord of my life. I just didn't want to go through the motions like I've seen everybody doing like I've done all my life. I wanted to have a relationship. So He blessed me with this relationship. And I remember I was down on um, uh, 17th Shooter. And uh, lunch snacks was up at Starrett for 20 Shooter. And I went up there to get me some snacks up on the graveyard. And I uh, turned around to come back. And I saw all of my Christian friends lined up up there. I said, I wonder what this is about. So I walked up to them and they started. They said, do you believe this, this, and this? I said, I do. And they said, oh my God! Oh my God, you got a devil! I said, Praise God. And they looked at me like they were shocked. What do you mean, Praise God? I said, That's the very same thing the Pharisee said about Jesus. Yes. You couldn't yeah. give me a better compliment. Yes. So I had to pick the shovel up and go over here and give me another way. And I ran into a few people, Rick, that understood what I was doing, understood where I was at, understood my That's relationship. Yes. And they become hungry for that relationship. And they got that relationship. Amen. You see, sometimes to attain what God really wants you to do, you got to pick up that shovel and get away from that well you done done and get over here and dig another one. And I found him to be faithful. I've seen him bless me so many ways. Sometimes the devil uses sickness. Christian, you know what I'm talking about? Rick. I just imagine everybody in here does. That hurts. Allergies. Aggravations and pains. Thorn in your foot. The devil tried to put an oxygen tank back on your back. Yep. The devil is a liar. Yes. That's all he is. He's a liar. He wants to try to afflict, but we've got to trust God. Yes. Sometimes we got to say, Devil, you're not messing with me. I'm not listening to this lie. I'm taking my shovel over here and I'm digging. And when I dig, there's going to be refreshing coming. Yes. The refreshing. Sometimes we need to get away from circumstances and situations. Sometimes your finances can get bad. Well, I've been there. Dot and I had a little old realm that we lived in, and uh, we didn't know nothing about paying tithe. So God, then I'm not getting on tithe, so I'm going to get along with everybody. 
And God just wasn't blessing us the way He could. The fact is, it got down. Calvin, we didn't have a bar, so we didn't have a broom. There wasn't a can of peas in the cabin. There wasn't nothing. God revealed His Word to God. She said, come here and look at this. I said, I don't want to see that. I ain't got the money to pay time. But we got out of that well we was in and took that shovel and went over and started digging. We paid our tithes within six months, wasn't it? Covers were full. It was an overflow. It was overflow. You couldn't put nothing else in there. Because that's what God did. When we learn to pick up our shovel and go over here and just dig another way. Now sometimes in life, let's look at some people in the Bible. Let's look at Jacob. Even though, in my opinion, Jacob was a nodhead. He's favored by God. Jacob lied, stole, cheated, the birthright and the blessing from his brother Esau. Yes. Esau said, I'm going to kill you. Jacob got a shovel. Started heading over our world and laying him. Getting away from that brother. He's going to keep him well over there. Well, he saw Rachel. He fell madly in love with Rachel. He said, I'll work seven years for that woman. He worked seven years for that woman. But on that wedding night, he didn't get Rachel, he got Leah. Yes. I imagine his heart was broken. I imagine he wanted to run. But he's done another way. Over seven more years. I'll get Rachel. Then I'll work some more years and I'll get some animals and flocks. Prosperity came to him. Why? Because he picked up the shell. He went over here and he dug it up. Laban got jealous. Laban's sons got jealous. He's got all of our inheritance. Everything we've got, everything we've worked for, he's not God. So Jacob goes and starts digging in another well. He's going back home. But brother's back home, Laban. Brother ain't for God. So, Jacob comes and he sort of pays homage to Esau. He sends them flocks in. He sends them animals. Esau forgives him. Jacob picked up that shovel and he dug another way. And was blessed. Isaac, his son, come along. No, he was Isaac's son. Jacob, his son, come along. I'm in favor of his father. The trouble come to him real quick. His brothers become jealous. They throw him in a pit. He could have gave up. But he did. They threw him a shovel and put him away. They sold him into sleep. The Bible says that when he went into Potiphar's house, that everything that he touched was blessed. He had dug that well over there, even in, when he was in trouble, even when he hurt and pain and bondage. He was a slave. But he dug that well over there. And he lost it. Then Potiphar's wife got other ideas. She tried to seduce him. He said, No. So they threw him into the prison, Rick. Yep. Prison ain't no good place to dig another well, is no. it? You think? But he got his shovel out and he dug and he dug and pretty soon he had favor of all the guards. Pretty soon Pharaoh sent for him to interpret the dream. Because he kept going. He didn't quit. He kept digging. Let's look at Caleb. Caleb was one of the spies that went and spied out the land of Canaan. Moses sent Caleb and Joshua and a whole bunch more out to spot them out. They all come back. Oh, there's giants in the land. 
We end up in grasshoppers. We can't do anything. Right. But Joshua and Caleb said, with God on our side, we can win. Yes. But they failed to go into the promise. I can say Caleb and that. Man, I'm in this wilderness 40 years. I'm still being away. God, I don't understand. I wanted to go in, God. I wanted to go in the cave. And I wanted to take the land. God, why am I still out here in this wilderness digging a well? But the day came that they went in. Caleb's 85 years old. Caleb looked over to Joshua and said, Moses promised me the land that the giants lived in when I got into Canaan. Have at it. Can you see that 85 year old man with his shovel? He's going to he's digging. He's going to wear some of them giants out that shovel. But he succeeded and he got what he was promised. Jeremiah, Peter, all of them, they had to dig another way. You may be here tonight discouraged. You may be here tonight very proud. I don't know what's going on. You might say, why did my need fix so? You might say, what am I doing in this hospital bed my oxygen? I'm six. Lord knows. You might say, oh God, why ain't things working? Oh God, why ain't I successful in what I'm doing? I'm your child. I'm trying to live for you. He said, pick up that shovel. Go over here and dig you a well where you need to dig it. And he will bless you. Do we have any needs in the house? Anybody need prayer? Everything okay with everything?